Hi, welcome to another fingernail fixer video. In this video, we're going to do a nail that I saw done by an educator in Oklahoma. It's a CD Education Ambassador, Melody, and she posted a beautiful picture on Facebook of some nails that she had done. And they had a really cool, artistic look to them. So, of course, I had to find out what she had done and ask if she minded if I made a video to share with all of you. And right now I'm getting my additives ready so I'm just scooping them up and making sure that they're smashed that there's not any little balls in there so that I can get a smooth even and easy coverage on the nail. And I have out the yellow, the bright red, the haute pink, and the antique bronze. We're gonna do this design over a coat of iced cappuccino you could also use sugared spice, whatever your preference is. We're going to start off with a coat of iced cappuccino cured or sugared spice. And I have a dry gel brush. This is just a CD Oval number six. I'm going to start off with the lightest of my colors so that if some color remains in my brush, I'm not getting my darker colors into my light. Beginning with the yellow, I'm just going to kind of pat it onto the nail in random places, making sure that I don't burnish it in too much. I'm literally just kind of tapping some onto the nail. Then I'm going to wipe my brush out dry, come in with my next color which is going to be red, and just kind of place that into random places as well. I'm also going over the top of some of my yellow to make some orange. Then I'm going to come back through and add a little bit of pink. Then drying off my brush and coming in with antique bronze. Now when Melody did this design, she used sugared spice and she used these four additives. And since I think everything in life needs a little extra sparkle, sorry Melody, but I've got to add some pink gold sparkle to your design. So I'm just going to come in and dust some pink gold sparkle all over the place. Then I'm really gently going to take the gel brush and just wipe some of the excess off. But again, making sure not to press very hard, just to gently wipe. You could, at this point, either tap the excess off of your client's nail, or you could even use a pipette to gently kind of blow a little breeze across the nail to remove the excess. I'm going to go ahead and stick the lids on the additives and set them out of the way, because what I'm going to do next, I definitely do not want to drip into my additive jars. So we're going to scoot those off out of the way. And for time's sake, we'll go ahead and leave that antique bronze there. I'm going to come in with some alcohol. So I'm going to get my alcohol container, and get a little puddle of alcohol in the top of it. I'm going to use a stylus, which is simply a little metal ball on the end of a little metal stick. I'm going to dip it in the alcohol and touch some of the alcohol to the additive. And as you can see, it kind of makes a little circle in the additive or a drip mark. And I'm just randomly going to touch a few of those onto the nail and let them spread out and create the drip marks. It's kind of tricky to get enough alcohol over to the nail to make the drip. And we're going to let that dry. Let me zoom in and see if you can see that. See how you can see those drips kind of imprinted in there? We're going to let that dry. And yes, it kind of feels like watching paint dry. 
However, Melody explained that if you don't let these initial drips dry, when you drip some more alcohol on there, you simply have alcohol running together and it makes the whole nail look like it's running. And I've kind of done that here where I got a little too much alcohol. You can see that these two drips ran together, so they don't look as cool and defined as the drips up at the top. So we definitely want to make sure and give these time to dry so that we can go in and add a few other drips which then gives the nail a fun layered look. It looks like they should be dry. So I'm going to go ahead and come in now with some more alcohol and drip it. And this second round of dripping is what makes everything look layered. As you can see the circles form, you can kind of see how they come up against each other and into each other, but they're still distinct in different shapes. I'm going to go ahead and stick one up here it looks like. And it's really difficult to tell if the alcohol landed. So make sure you give it a couple seconds before you put some more alcohol back on the same spot so that you can give it a minute to dry and see your pattern. Can you see the design that that's taking on? Isn't that wicked? Let's put one down in here where these ran together and see if we can get some separation down there. And you can see the alcohol separate out the additive and make the drip. And then you have a really wicked textural design. You'll want to top coat this and cure the top coat for two minutes, but definitely make sure you allow it to dry before you top coat it. Thanks a lot, Melody, for a wicked idea.